We finally made it back. Well, what are we gonna do now? I think we should start by finding Roland's house. If memory serves, he was living at the church. But why the sudden interest? The church. Got it. We still need to work on his people skills. Yay! Well, at least we know where he went. We should go see what he's thinking. I smell a new mission. Looking for a way to save Roland. This place is replete with his memory. We really appreciated it, you chipping in to rescue Roland. I owe him just as much as you do. More, even. I feel bad intruding on his home without permission, but there might be clues around. Wanna help us search? Hello there. Did I hear you mention Roland? Huh? Oh, yeah. You a friend of his, too? So my ears didn't deceive me. We've met before, remember? At the docks of Tempeel. Oh! You're the guy that told us about Hallowed Ground! The very same. But, um, back to Roland. Would you happen to know where he is? I can't seem to get in touch. might not come back, actually. What? When did you become a glass half empty kind of person? There's gotta be a chance. It might take half a miracle, but... That's fine. I just wanted to be sure he was safe. Knowing Roland, he'll probably wander in through that door when we need him most. Though, to be honest, I hope that's sooner rather than later. Why is that? Something wrong? Well, as you may know, in addition to being a vicar, Roland was the local Mr. Fixit. And I'm not just talking repairs. Monster hunting, herb picking, he was a real lifesaver. But now that Roland's gone, there's tons of work that's going unfinished. I'll do it. Huh? I'll take up his mantle. Ah, this is so painful to watch. Will somebody please teach this kid to speak like a normal person? I think Id meant to say he just wants to be helpful now that Roland's gone. Right, Id? Right. Oh, well, that's very kind of you. But, um, how do I put this? 
We were comfortable asking Roland for favors because we trusted him. While you certainly look like an upstanding young man, you're still a stranger. No offense. But I... We'll help out, too. Great idea! Hey, mister, we aren't strangers. What if we tagged along? Well, all right, if you insist. I have to say, though, you've done so much for our city. I feel guilty piling more work on you. You sure about this, Captain? No problem. The more, the merrier. For sure! There's no way we'd let you pick up the slack all by yourself. Yeah, yeah. Well, now that everything's settled, I'll forward all our jobs to the Crew Alliance Reform. Whenever you feel like taking something on, head over to the quest counter. Thank you, again, and best of luck. everyone's favorite crew. Perfect timing, as usual. Truth is, I just put out an urgent cry for help. We got a caravan strong-armed by goblins in Skyworm Valley. I'm looking for folks to beat off the half-beasts and retrieve the stolen goods. Might be a tough battle, but think you can head out now? Yeah. Knew I could count on you? Take care of yourselves, you hear? to test this out. Interesting. I see. Hmm. Nice. Like it. Huh. 
to make those go no preparations the key to yes can I help you mother said she would bring us salvation it was a glorious message, and for that she gained a devoted following. As for me, how could I doubt the woman who pulled me from the fiery wreck, who raised me as her own? I thought that together we would save the Sky Realm, even if it meant cutting down any who opposed us. But over time, the sacrifices began to mount. I... I struggled. My reason battled with my heart, which battled with my conscience. Mother was pure and righteous, but to sacrifice the entire Sky Realm. No. She just lost her way for a bit. She'd wake up one day and see she had strayed. As her child, as her defender, I wanted to believe that she'd change for me. Even at the very end, when I was forced to turn my sword on her. I was praying for an alternative, any alternative, but she would not repent, and I was confronted with the full force of the atrocities I'd committed in Avia's name, but there was one light left to guide me. Just follow your heart. It might lead you to scary places, but at least you'll know you're being true to yourself. Thank you, Lyria. If you hadn't reminded me of my own strength, I'd still be in the dark following Lilith. I swear to you that I will fix even more than I destroyed. And one day, perhaps I will be worthy of your forgiveness. Fifteen years ago, Dali fell prey to a violent catastrophe. One that still lives etched in my mind. There was an explosion. Immense and sudden. My home went up in flames, and with it the only life I had ever known. People were fleeing and dying in all directions. The air was filled with screams the smell of burning. Then I heard it, the soul-piercing roar of a dragon. My short life should have come to an end that day, except... Shh, it's okay. Let me be the one to save you. Salvation came in the form of a kind woman. Her name was Lilith, prophet of the pilgrims of Avia. From that day forth, she was both my mother and mentor. I worshipped her. And the thing about devotion is, it makes you blind. Mother had followers in the hundreds, thousands. And my simple child's mind thought, well, if this many people have faith in her, she has to be good, right? I wanted desperately to be of use to her, so I trained to be the perfect guardian. Young Eid, one day you shall be as mighty as I! General Galanza taught me how to fight. You wouldn't want the other pilgrims saying you're riding your mother's coattails, would you? Then you must prove yourself! General Magliel taught me why we fight. Her training was harsh, but that's how I acquired the makings of a general. All effort, no nepotism. 
Finally, I had some value to Mother. Her sharpest sword. I never felt happier or more accomplished. I thought we were going to save the Sky Realm. The naivete of it all. After we captured the Shaman of Salvation for Lilith's cause, I was assigned to be the girl's keeper. That made me enemy number one to the Grand Cypher's crew. Every time I took Lyria to a Primal Beast altar, they'd be there, and we'd fight. I mean, there was a time or two we had to cooperate to prevent widespread calamity. That's beside the point. They were standing in the way of Lilith's mission, opening a path to the Promised Land to Estelusia, and bringing salvation to all Sky Dwellers. Salvation. It's a powerful word in a messed up world like ours. I wonder everyone got roped in by her lies. Lilith was no more than an astral desperate to return to her home dimension. And she would have sacrificed the whole Sky Realm to do it. I tried to reason with her. Might as well have asked an avalanche to change course. So I turned to prayer. But what are hopes and belief without action? So left with no other choice, I joined the crew of the Grand Cypher to dispatch my own mother. But I never could have foreseen what would happen next. Lilith did something and freed a monster from within me. The dragon I'd seen the day Dolly burned, with wings so vast they overshadowed all of Sega Grande. Bahamut, Versa. But then I learned, Bahamut didn't cause the Dali calamity. It had come to stop it. It was Lilith who killed my family and raised my home. She'd only let me live for one reason. She needed a vessel to seal the dragon in. And I was conveniently nearby. She'd raised me to win my loyalty and protect herself from the god of destruction now living inside me. But when I stopped being of use to her, she abandoned me and let me turn in to Bahamut. I don't know how to describe the feeling of flesh melting into scales, a fire filling your stomach. All human warmth. Human blood seemed to rush from my veins, and it was replaced by an overwhelming urge to destroy. It was like being swept away in a torrent. Any attempt to fight it only made the suffering worse. I was so tempted to give in. But the crew wouldn't let me. Apparently, the captain was sure I wouldn't lose my soul battle with Bahamut. So to help me along, they decided to beat on the dragon from the outside, until he coughed me up. Yeah, not the most elaborate plan. But it worked. The whole time they were fighting, they called my name, and the sound of their voices brought me back. I split myself from Bahamut, then joined the crew to take it down. We had our losses, though. Bahamut hit me and the captain with a blow that sent us hurtling into another dimension. A man named Roland dove in to save us, sacrificing himself along the way. And that's how we came back to Folka without him. Roland used to be the local Mr. Fixit, by the way. And I took up that mantle. I owed him that much. And I figured it'd be a first step in making amends. Let's talk. 
What kind of weapons you need? What should I strengthen? I'll unlock its hidden potential. Your weapons won't betray you. You ready to make? Yeah. Knew I could count on you. Take care of yourselves. You hear? Our covers. I'll make this quick. <laughs> well done. Thank you. A brittle. Look out! Here comes the backup brigade. We'll manage. Keep picking them off. Dang it! Let's go our side now. This is a cakewalk. <laughs> oh, that's that. Let's grab the stuff and get out of here. This should be it. Let's move on. Something's watching us. Stay sharp. More goblins. But they shouldn't be much of a threat. I don't know. It's really weird they're attacking with such a small tank. Agreed. Though I don't sense reinforcements. The Wyvern! It's called Skyward Valley for a reason. Brace yourselves, everyone. I'm sure his my brother weren't many goblins. No, local goblins should know how to defend themselves against Wyverns. So there must be more at play. What you know? Well done. See, spirit of the Take care of the blind lizard. You got it. No sight of the stuff we came for. We'll just have to keep looking. Let's go. <sighs> yeah. Back. Sealed there. By my blade. Remember the sensation. It was exhilarating. Handling all these quests by himself? He certainly has a knack for them, doesn't do. he? You really can leave it to Mr. Fixit. Hmm. Hey, did you guys see that? Something big just flew by. Not part of the brief, not part of our problem. Another goblin. Let's take it out before it notices us. <laughs> Not bad. Uh. Come here, little 
guy. More of them. Here they come. Something's wrong. Yeah, yeah, not, ready. Ready. not from us. It doesn't matter. We came here to do I'm one thing. Screw them. Thanks, Captain. <laughs> Two of three accounted for, so now we just have this one more. Hey, no, you couldn't call it. That wasn't half bad. Oh, Catalina! You <laughs> sounded just like Sierra! <laughs> Wait, no, I... My sense of humor is far less fun reliable. <laughs> Something humorous just now. Oh, it's nothing, Id. Don't break your brain over a little joke. What joke? Enough messing around. There's the last supply pack. We have to take out these goblins first. What was that? Stay alert! No way! Nobody said anything about a griffin! Well, this explains why the goblins were fleeing. No one wants to be Griffin lunch. We can't have it stirring up any more monsters. In which case, better take it down. Hey, now you're starting to sound like a real Mr. Fix-It. Back off! Rain on the hill. Nice fall. Stay vigilant. Now is not. Proceed with caution. It's over! Get out of the top! Yep. Mission, I mean, quest complete. Now to bring the items back to the client. Yeesh, you're all business, huh? <laughs> Go easy on him. He's still new to all this. Hey, I heard about the job. Thanks a million. You should be thanking it. Yep, we couldn't have done it without him. Id, the citizens of Tempeel would be honored if you kept serving our city. And I'm sorry that I ever doubted you. 
I be sorry? Uh... Um, I think it meant to say that you don't need to apologize. That he's happy to help. Right, kid? Uh, yeah. Yuria? When did you learn to speak id? <laughs> I mean, doesn't he remind you of a certain someone? <laughs> right? I've heard Roxy talk more than these two. Wait, really? Uh, yeah. You mostly just go mm-hmm and uh-uh and stuff until you need to make a decision. Exactly. You might not talk the talk, but you certainly walk the walk. I know this city will be safe in your hands. They never would have trusted me without your help. So thank you. No worries. Let's make Roland proud. We owe that guy our lives. The least we could do is help him with the housekeeping. Yep. Not to mention we even found his journal. Talk about a clinky dink. It truly is a priceless keepsake. His memories are etched across these pages. He must have been super busy putting out fires to drop this and not even notice. <laughs> I don't know. Our boy Roland sounds exactly like the type to have his head in the clouds. You know, if we keep running errands, maybe we'll find more of his belongings. Good point. By retracing his footsteps, we could discover a way to rescue him. Speaking of his footsteps, Id, if I may, there's one point I would like to emphasize. What? Skill wasn't the only reason Roland was so beloved. There was also the way he carried himself. How gentle he was. That's for sure. I'd ask Roland for directions in a heartbeat. On the other hand, you always look like you just sniffed a garbage can. Hmm. So what should I do? You could try smiling more. Okay. Uh. That's how someone would smile if they were sitting on hot coal. Oh, I know. Id, why don't you try acting like Roland? We can start with how he talks. Just leave it to Mr. Fix It. Your turn. Mm -hmm. Just leave it to Mr. Fix It. Uh, wow. We've got a long way to go.
That wasn't so bad. What's next? Skyfarers, all right, let's get to it. Want your weapons tempered? Always aim for the top. Your weapons won't betray you. It is an honor. Let's do this. Yes, can I help you?
this one, yes? Would you take this one? Please be careful! Alright. Is your stomach growling? Understood. Yes, certainly. Yes. Away with you. Ah, three plus two. What? Not yet. Go on, you see. The tide rises. Everyone, take one. Put this ball. Fight us. on me. No, after you. You're a fierce ally. Yeah, that was great. You too. Never give up. Thank you. This should help. I am in your debt. Like the dawn. Final. Stay focused. Watch out for their next attack. I'll protect you, Felix. Whoa! Break it, honey. Take this. Stay focused! Like the push forward! I'm on it! A sublime combination! I guess so. Sure. You never fail me. Keep it up. Stay focused! Death, breathe, play. Dawn flies. To this formation. Agree. Small wings may beckon the storm. Butterfly. No need. You won't prevail. Stay focused. For four. Not shall live. Go. 
back to life. Over. Order will prevail. Here it comes. Not now, not ever. Join this one. Tide of chaos. They focus on plan. Finish the end is in sight. Keep it up. Surrender. Southern cross. We will get through. It looks like you've got the hang of handyman work now, Ed. You think so? I know so. Everyone in town... Skyfarers, huh? Want your weapons tempered? What kind of weapons you need?
Let's get to it. What should I strengthen? I'll unlock its hidden potential. I can make just about anything. Which one? Show me. Come back sometime. They can come to you with their problem. <laughs> oh no. Hello there. And that's where this new chapter in my life begins. Me, as the new Mr. Fix-It. After clearing up some requests, I thought I'd earn some, I don't know, respect, honor, from the crew alliance for folly. But it seems you can't buy forgiveness so easily. Ahem. So I believe we're all aware of Avia's assault on Seed Hollow? She looked straight at me as she spoke. The actions of the Pilgrims, myself included, had left a number of locals without homes. There was a plan to resettle volunteers in Tempil. Give them a fresh start. They're going to be out in the open, moving, building. This includes children and the elderly. Your job would be to protect the settlers until their homes are up. Trustworthy Skyfarers only. Hey, don't push yourself. You can sit this one out, you know. Rackham lay a hand on my shoulder, but I shook my head at him. We take it. This is right. I couldn't stay stuck in the past forever. I needed to move on. I needed to help those I hurt move on. It wasn't an easy choice, though. Our patron... The family who was bankrolling this mission didn't know I'd worked for Avia. And I didn't know if I had the guts to tell them. Yeah, I know. How am I supposed to atone for crimes I'm too scared to admit? Still, one step at a time. Too much of a coward to take responsibility? Fine. I could at least start by repairing some of the damage I'd done. I'd make sure the settlers built in peace. And if one of them happened to find out about my past, then that would be that. I'd accept whatever punishment they saw fit to give me. It didn't matter where I hid or how far I ran. Retribution would find me eventually. The ride to Tempil was uneventful. The proposed relocation site was set near an old storehouse by the river. There was water here, and the building could be repurposed for homes. The migrants dragged their feet and often looked back towards Seed Hollow. Most had been born and raised there. We'd been hired as bodyguards, but for the time being at least, all was quiet. Just the sound of wind and running water. Patrols didn't take long, and only one or two people had to go at a time. The rest of us found other ways to keep busy. Carrying supplies, repairing the storehouse, prepping materials, cooking. Whatever needed doing, we did it. 
While the adults were building the new body of the village, the children, they were forming the new heart of it. It's amazing how kids can find happiness in just about anything. The world's fresh and new to them. Down by the river, they discovered unfamiliar plants and bugs with funny shapes. In the old storehouse, they looked for hidden treasure and lost stories. Sure, sometimes they got in the way of work and were scolded. But you could tell the adults appreciated having the kids around. It gave them hope. Eo and Lyria were their self-appointed babysitters. They called it serious work, but it looked like fun and games to me. Those kids didn't have a care in the world. Well, all except one of them. There was a girl who would always glance my way, pretty much from day one of this job. I say girl, but she was a Harvin, so her age was hard to pinpoint. But she played with the kids more than she worked, so I assumed. Anyways, turned out she was a teenager. That would explain the looks she gave me. I don't think any kid could have been filled with such fear, such anger, such hate. Didn't take much to guess why she had a grudge against me. But she made sure I knew. It happened one day when I was on my way to the storehouse to stack some freight. She was in my path, and since I had a load of boxes in my arms, I almost bowled her over. Ah! Don't come closer! Her voice was loud and shrill. I won't hurt you. I promise. Yeah, right. Everyone else might have forgotten you, but I haven't. We're here because of you. Her name was Shiralu, 14 years old. Parents volunteered to come on this resettlement mission after they had lost their livelihoods back in Seed Hollow. She had reason to hate me. During this whole exchange, I felt strangely... relieved. No more waiting in the shadows, trying to work up the courage to atone. Atonement had come for me. Why are you here? To take our new homes? Never. I only wished I were better with words. To convey even a fraction of the guilt I felt. To give her even the slightest comfort. Not a day goes by where I don't regret what I've done. I wanted to tell her I was ready to repent. But my voice came out flat. Insincere. A liar and... But she was cut off by warning bells. I raced back to the settlement center, where I found Rackham. Goblin sighting! Get everyone inside the gates, Prano! His voice rose up over the cacophony. An attack! But my father just left for the storehouse! Remain here. I'll find him. I left without waiting for a response. We'll handle the goblins. Everyone's safe. Should be. Well, we're here, isn't it? Now come on, we got goblin tail to kick. It's over! Break it, Lake! To victory! There's more here. They're trying the pincer maneuver. Vern, you watch over the settlers. Good! Leave it to me! Yep. There's so many. Where'd they all come from? Heard this place used to be Monster Central. Guess these are the stragglers. Oh, 
Don't assume anything, Lyria. First, we secure the area, then we start a search. It, do you know something? Right, we'll get the search party started. Right after these messages. The tide rises. Hey, I heard Shira loose near the windmill. Yeah, that sounds about right. She was worried about her dad. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go. Heads up! There's another goblin band over here. What? Shirolu, where did you go? Lucas on the fight at hand. Here they come. Don't worry, we're here to help. Do you think you can stay hidden for a bit? Yeah, I can do that. Thank you. There's more? Out of my way! Wait, I recognize that voice. sword was too fast for the eye to fall. In battle, one does not see so much as foresee. Follow me! I'll follow You're mine! Not. You guys rock! I'll follow this Indeed. crew and... Looks like we're all clear. You can come out now, Shirolu. <sighs> It was a close call, but we managed to find Shira Lu in time. Everything's going to be okay now. Thank you. Lyria ran over to the girl. I don't think Shira Lu was injured, but her face was pale, and her lips were tight. It had to have been me. The reason she looked so pained. If I hadn't forced her from her home, she wouldn't have almost lost her life. I turned and walked a few steps. I'll secure the way back. Bring her when she feels better. Wait, Id? Shirolu needed good people around her. What did I ever bring but suffering? Yes? to view the requests? What do you think? Right! Come again! 